going to be using the two and a half mace ring nail. First thing I'm going to do, obviously, is check the door again, make sure it's locked. And then what I want to do is I want to start from the bottom hinge and work all the way up. Looking at all these hinge pins, they're all tight on the hinge plate. So I'm going to need to nail it, drive them out. The bottom hinge, even though that's where we start, is the most difficult just because of access. So the halion bar, I'll hold the ads end down. That gives me enough clearance to drive that nail up and drive that hinge pin out. Again, the reason why you start from the bottom and work your way up is if you start from the top and work your way down, that door can stop, start to drop away from the jam and then it'll create torque on the middle and bottom hinges, making those pins more difficult to get out. If you start from the bottom, work your way up, the door kind of stays in place and gravity works in your favor. Halligan bar like so now. You can start to see, I mean, hopefully you guys can start to see, once I got that last pin out, the door wants to drop away from the jam on this side. So this gives me a, a purchase now, a gimme, if you will, for me to get the ads in and work the jam, or the, the hinge side of the door away from the jam. Now, this is just a, a knob lock with that small half inch throw, but even if you had a deadbolt, I've done this with uh, a door that had two deadbolts. What you're gonna do is, once you work the hinge side of the door away from the jam, this door is going to start to drop away. If it doesn't, you got to kind of almost grab the door and, and kind of shimmy it so you can pull those deadbolts out of their strikes or keepers. So I'll take that gimme right here and just start working the door away from the jam, the hinge side. Because just the last lock is there, you're going to see it drop out shortly. Okay? You got to envision now that if the deadbolts were engaged, there's going to be a little torque on those right now. So what I would do is, with the hinge side of the door away from the jam, you're just gonna kind of walk it away from the latch side until those deadbolts clear. And then you can remove the door entirely. To reverse it, you're just kind of reversing the process. The latch side or the lock side is gonna go into the strikes or keepers first, and then you work the door back into the hinges. And that's best done with two people. Always, you're gonna kind of reverse the order. Start with that top hinge, get that hinge pin in, and then middle, and then bottom. Hey guys, Dale Pucka here again. Welcome to the third video on using masonry nails in the fire service. Now, if you haven't seen the first two videos yet, I'll include a link to both of them in the description of this one, so you can go back and take a look at them. I definitely recommend that you at least watch the first video in the series because it kind of sets the stage for using masonry nails in a fire service. Now, like in video two, this video is gonna be on another method of finesse style entry, or what's sometimes referred to as gentleman truck techniques, where we make entry to a building or a room or a compartment within the building without breaking the locks or doing any damage to the jam of the door itself. Most of us know that there are a lot of different methods for finesse style entry, and most of them start with an approach to the lock side first. But in some situations or circumstances, it can be more difficult to make entry on the lock side without doing damage. And if that's the case, and you're presented with standard style hinges like the ones I'm gonna review in this video, you can use a masonry nail to drive out the hinge pin and literally move the entire door with the locks from the jam and make entry that way like you saw in, this, in the first entry clip of this video. The key guys is you have to have a standard style hinge that allows us to drive the hinge pin out. Now before we go any further, I really want to stress this guys, you're using this method, this technique with the masonry nail when you don't have a toolbox or a lockout box available, either on your rig or easy access to it. If you do and either one of those toolbox or lockout boxes are set up well, you're going to have a lot more options. This technique is used when all you have is a hand tool, ideally a halligan bar, and just a masonry nail. Again, if it's a standard style hinge where you can drive the hinge pin out, you're gonna get in most of the time. I've used this technique on a lot of doors through the years, both exterior and interior, and have, have had great success with it. But 
you have to have a hinge that you can drive out the pin. So there can't be any set screw or pin that goes through the hinge plate that locks that hinge pin in place, right? Now, where the nail comes into play, guys, is a, a lot of hinges that you're gonna see out there, this top of this hinge pin is gonna be really tight on the hinge plate. And depending on the shape of that hinge pin, it can be really flush. So you can't get the edge of, a, of an ax blade or your ads or fork end of the halligan bar on there enough to grab any material to start knocking it out. So we use a mason nail to start the process and then take and finish it with the hand tool. Now, when it comes to standard style hinges, guys, there's really gonna be three out there that you're gonna typically see. In this first picture, if you look at the bottom of the hinge, it's wide open and you can actually see the base of the hinge pin. Those are the easiest for us because we can take almost anything in there and put in the base of the hinge plate and start driving that hinge pin out. Then you're going to have the second style hinge, which is what you see in my hand here. So this is just a miniature version of a commercial style hinge. And again, here's the top of the hinge pin. If you look at it on the side, uh, it almost looks like there's two hinge pins. There's another disc that's literally affixed to one of the plates. And when I reverse it over, you can see there's a hole in the bottom of this uh, plate. Now that hole is gonna vary in diameter. I've actually seen it as small in diameter as a toothpick, but a lot of times it's big enough that you can get the mason nail into that hole to start driving that pin out. Now I'll typically start with the two and a half. Like in video two, I actually mentioned this. The, the two and a half inch is a little smaller in diameter than the three inch. The two and a half is an 8D and the three inch is typically a 10D. And the two and a half is, I don't need anything longer than that. So I get it in that hole, you start tapping it up, with a hand tool to get that pin high enough that you can either grab it by hand or, or knock it the rest of the way out with your hand tool. Okay, so that's the second style of hinge that you're gonna see where that bottom disc has a hole in it. Now the third style of hinge is gonna look very similar on the side profile, okay? It's gonna look like you got two hinge pins in place, but when you reverse it, instead of having a hole in the base of it, it's gonna look like the top of the hinge pin. It's gonna be solid. That's more of a security style hinge. So if you have that style hinge where the base of the hinge plate is, has a solid disc or that hole is too small that you can't insert anything into it to start driving that hinge pin out, here in lies the other advantage of the masonry nail. Again, in the fact that these are heat treated, case hardened steel and they have a really sharp tip, you can take that tip now where you can't grab that edge with an ax blade or halligan bar, okay, fork end or adze end, this tip is sharp enough that you can get it into that seam, okay, and start driving that hinge pin up high enough again so then you can knock it out with the rest, the rest of the way with your hand tool. And that's demonstrated in this clip. I usually start on a pretty aggressive angle because what you're trying to do is drive that point in between the hinge assembly and the top of the hinge pin first to grab some metal, okay? Now you can start to see it starting to move up now. Then I'll actually reverse it so I, I have a little bit more contact with the head of the nail. Let me get it to this point. If it's not gonna come out by hand, then a lot of times I'm gonna actually just go right to the Halligan bar. Some of these guys you really got to get almost all the way out because they're so tight. But there you have it. Work on the remaining hinges and you're good to go. And then start prying the door from the jam side out until you can clear the door from the jam and then pull it away from the, the lock or latch side. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you got something out of the video. Feel free to subscribe to my channel at Dale G. Peckle and set yourself up for notifications so you're made aware when I upload a new video. Hope to see you on the next one.